Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So in this video, we're going to uh, solve something like cycle detection in an undirected graph using DFS. So if you have not seen the previous video, go back and watch it. We have solved how to detect a cycle using BFS. But over here, we will be using the depth first search algorithm. So you know what is a cycle? It's very simple. If you start from a node and you come back to that node, via any path without breaking uh, any edge that is what you call as a cycle so this graph definitely has a cycle so for this graph this will be the corresponding adjacency list if you don't know how to draw or how to write an adjacency list lecture 2 or lecture 3 is what you need to go back and watch okay so how do you detect a cycle using dfs what is the concept of dfs the concept of dfs is it starts from a source then tries to go here, 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 then probably tries to go here, then has no way, goes back and tries to go one. And if it reaches back to somewhere which is previously visited, because you need to understand you started from one in this direction. And if you're again coming back to one via DFS, it means you definitely have a cycle that is for sure right so this is the algorithm this is the intuition that we are going to follow we start from somewhere and if we reach any node that has been previously visited in the path we call it as a cycle okay so let's uh, we know how dfs works we take a source node so we can easily take a source node so before that please make sure you take this particular visited array so in the visited array, make sure everything is marked as zero apart from the source node, or you can uh, probably keep the source node as whatever, like that is your choice. I will try to keep it as zero. And in the DFS, we can mark. So the first, for the first time, the DFS is called something like DFS of one comma. Make sure you carry the parent. Make sure you carry the parent. It came from one minus one. I'll tell you why do you need to carry the parent. So this is basically the node. And this is nothing but the parent. Why do we need to carry the parent? I will tell you that. So you are at one. So one has an adjacent node of two and has an adjacent node of three. So first the call will be made for two and then it will come back. Then the call will be made for three and then it will come back. So let's start the algorithm by having the DFS as one and we can say it as minus one. Remember, this is the parent node and this is the normal node, right? So what we do is we go back and see who are the adjacents of one. But before that, whatever DFS is called, mark it as visited, mark it as visited. Now we go back and see for one, who are its adjacent nodes or the neighbor nodes. And how do you know who are the neighbor nodes? Very simple. You go to the adjacency list and you get this list. And we see that two is one of the neighbor nodes and three is one of the neighbor nodes. So apparently there will be a call for two at first saying that the parent is one saying that it came from one. Basically it came from one. That is what it, what you need to carry. So first the call for two will be made. Once the DFS is done, then we will go for three, right? That is how the DFS works. So we can keep it as dotted. Now remember over here dotted means we will do this call after this particular call is over. Okay. So we have DFS of two. So if we have a DFS of two, this is where you'll understand the concept of parent. For two, the moment you reach two, obviously, first and foremost thing, done. Next, neighbor nodes of two. Who is it? One. And you see, hey, it's already visited. You, you touched someone, but I'm like, hey, listen, stop, wait, wait. You came back. You came from one. If you came from one, it's not a cycle. You can't call something like this as a cycle. This is not a cycle. This is not a cycle. So since you came from one and it is visited, I will not say that you came back to a node who was previously in the path. Got it? Okay. I repeat. I cannot say I came back to a node who was previously in the path because I just came back to the parent. So that's why we will not make a DFS call for this. But we will make a DFS call for 5. And we will say 5, you came from 2. And the moment it reaches 5, 5 will be 1. So for 5, who are the adjacent nodes? 
again two. Two is marked as visited, but I wait. Two is the parent. Next seven. Yes, seven is unvisited. So you call for seven, and what do you say? Hey, listen. For seven, if you are saying the parent is five, done. At the moment you reach seven, market is visited. Now for seven, what are the adjacent notes? Five. That's the parent. That's already visited. Now we will go to six now. DF is off. Six and the parent is seven. Market has visited now. For six, who are the who are the neighbors? Three. For six, there is a three. There is a seven. For seven, there will be no call because it's the parent. But for three, there will be a call. Do the call for three. Do the call for three, saying that the parent is six. Market has visited. Let's go to three. So this is one four six. Just in order to understand, like ease out understanding, I'll do it four one six. It's okay. Like that since list can be written as one four six, but I'll write it as four one six to be able to explain you in a better way. Okay. So as of now, we have DFS of three six and three is marked as visited. Three says one of my neighbor notes is four. I'm like fine, fine, go and call it. So we go and call the DFS for four where the parent is three. Four is marked as visited. So four apparently has just one node three, who's the parent who's already visited, no one else. So he says, I did not get a. So I'll return a false. I did not get a cycle. If I end up DFS calls and I don't get a cycle, I'll always return false. But this three called for four, it will call for one now. This was left. The DFS of one comma three was left. But will it call for DFS of one three? Will it call for DFS of one three? No. Why? Because this one, if you see, is visited over here, and it's not the parent. How did it? How did it mark itself? Because it was previously in the path. It was previously in the path here. That is why it was marked in the visited. So I say, hey, for this one, don't call it. Do not call it. Instead of that, since you got someone, return a true. Now this guy who called this function sees this function is returning him a true. He says you are returning me a true. I'll also return a true because you got a cycle, so I also got a cycle. Now this guy says you are returning a true. I'll also return a true. Now this guy says you are returning me a true. I'll also return a true. This guy says you are returning me a true. I'll also return a true. Now this guy says I got a true. Should I go and have my brains on three one? I don't need to do any further calls. I got it true. If I'm getting it true, there's no need to do DFS for further calls. And I say, true for the source node starting with one. I got someone as true, which means I have a cycle. Which means I have a cycle. Does that make sense? That's sure. So if you remember the DFS algorithm, the DFS algorithm was something like node, and now you can carry the parent. I'm not writing a uh, visited and all. I'll show that in the code. I'm trying to explain in the pseudo code. So the moment you enter, you always mark it as one, and then you go across all its neighbor nodes, right? You go across all its neighbor nodes. Now, under this, there will be some algorithm. What will be the algorithm? One of the algorithms is very sure. If it is unvisited, if the adjacent node is unvisited. We go and call the DFS for this adjacent node, and the parent will be node because for this node, this is the adjacent. It's something like node joined to IT. So if you're calling for IT, this will be the parent. So you'll call for it. But if you remember this, this call was made DFS of four three, and it returned a false. You did not do anything. But when you made a call for three six, when you made a call for three six, it found out one was. Already visited, so it returned a true. So if any of the DFS calls is returning a true, you keep on returning true. So this is a DFS call that you are making. So if it by chance returns a true, remember this. If it by chance returns a true, not a false. If it's false, we keep on checking for adjacent neighbors. But if this guy says, "I went to node to IT and to so on so on, and somewhere I got a cycle. Somewhere I got a cycle." And I return true, true, true. 
So this IT returned a true. So I'm saying this guy got it true. So if you got it true, you say, okay, in overall, I got it true. This is for any DFS call that gives you a true. But what if it's not visited? What if it's not visited? Again, interesting thing. Let's come back. Over here, for when you started with uh, two, you did not go to one because one was visited and one was the parent. So if it is parent, then it's not a cycle. It has to be a non-parent. It has to be non-parent. Then only I can call it as a cycle. So I'll be like, if this guy is visited, if it comes to else, means visited. And if it is not apparent, if it is not apparent, dude, how did it visit itself? That means it is a cycle. That means this is the point where I encounter a cycle. Something like this. When I was trying for three, I got one. How did you get one? One was visited, but it was not apparent. It's a cycle. You returned a true. You returned a true saying it got a true. So that's why, that's why over here you return a true. Perfect. And this is how this will end. And if after all the DFS calls, after traveling for all the adjacent nodes, you never got a cycle, what did you do? Yeah. And then just go and return a false if you never got a cycle. This is how the pseudo code will look like for the DFS. You can pause it over here. You can check it out. If you're not understanding, if you're not understanding it properly, my suggestion to you will be draw multiple graphs. Draw some multiple graphs. Do the DFS calls. Do a dry run of this code. Eventually, it will get into your head. I'm, I'm sure that it definitely did get into your head. But just in case, I'm saying just in case. Okay. Again, your recursion should be strong. You can watch the recursion playlist for that. So guys, I hope you have understood the algorithm. Now it's time to code it out. So as usual, I'll be writing the code on right, which is the C++ code. And then on left, you can uh, easily find the Java code. Okay. So private. And I say, hey, listen, I need uh, something like a DFS. Perfect. I need the node. I need the parent. And then I need the visitor. That's for sure. And I need the adjacent as well. Do I need anything else? I don't think. So what do you do always? The moment you reach there, this is something which you do. Then you say, these are the adjacent nodes, right? And you say, okay, go on. Then you're like, okay, if this guy is not visited, which is this adjacent node is not visited, then you can just roughly go on and call the DFS for adjacent node. The node will be the parent, the visited and the adjacency. But if by chance this returns a true, if by chance this returns a true, it can return a false, then I'll call for the next guys. But if this returns a true, you say it has a cycle. Yes, you say it has a cycle. So this is how, if it returns a false, it's fine. Otherwise, because if it returns a false, you're going to do a DFS for all the other things. Okay, next, if it is unvisited, like if it has been previously visited, and it's not apparent, if it is not apparent, then I'll be like, how did it visit that means it's a repeated node in the path cycle or else you say return false perfect this is how you can easily get this across now over here what will you write will you just call something like return dfs source node one minus one visited and adjacency will this work this should have worked if the graph was something like uh just a minute let me do this if it should have worked if the graph was something like a single component graph. But, but over here, the graph can have multiple components. Yes. So in case of multiple components, let's take an example. So assume this is like one, two, three, and four. This is the first component. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. By the way, components in the sense, if you don't know, lecture four. Okay, lecture four connected components. So this is it here. So if you just call for DFS of one, it will go and it will visit these guys and it will never find a cycle. In order to find a cycle, you have to actually call DFS of seven, right? So how will you do this? This is where what you do is you always uh, call something like I equal to one till nine. And you say, if these guys are not visited, then call the DFS for the source. 
and then if this dfs call comes out as true you can say there is a cycle what does this mean for the first time i will be one so you find it not visited you find it not visited you call the dfs for one so it goes the it goes for the call of one marks all of them and says i did not find a cycle next i will become two but it will find two as visited no dfs calls next will be three Again, find visited, no DFS calls. Next will be four, I'll find already visited, no DFS calls. Next will be five, non visited, so goes and calls the DFS for five now. So, first a DFS call for one was made, next the DFS call of five was made. Five will make sure five is visited, six is visited, right? So, now the DFS of five will be called, and five will go and mark these guys, and again it will not get a cycle. They come back, then it'll be six, then it'll be seven. This time when DFS of 7 is called, 7 goes and finds a cycle. It says true. So you get a true and it says true, you get a cycle. This is the new addition that you have to do. But make sure you declare the visited array so that you don't call like DFS 1, then don't call like DFS 2, then DFS 3. No need to visit again and again. In total, just make sure you visit like 4 nodes, 6 nodes, 9 nodes. In total, you just need to make sure you visit nine nodes. So what you will do is instead of this, you will say, okay, by the way, zero based indexing, this is zero based indexing to take care of this. So if not visited, I, then I will say if DFS of I parent will be always minus one visited adjacent is coming out to be true. You return a true or else at the end of the day, if you, none of them gave a cycle, you return a false. So you can just compile that and check it out. It is running absolutely fine. So it's time to discuss uh, the space complexity. Are we using the space complexity? We are. We're using something like recursion stack space, which can be big of n at the worst case. Assume all the nodes are connected. It will be a recursion something like assume you get a graph something like this. Then the recursion will go here, then here, then here, then here. So complete recursion stack space. We're using something like a visited array. So you can just sum it up to be go off and I'm not using like, I'm not adding the adjacency list into account. What about the time complexity? We're using a DFS traversal and we know the DFS traversal is N plus two E because for every node you visit all the degrees or all the adjacent nodes and the summation of adjacent nodes is two E. So N plus two E plus B go off N because you're running a for loop. You're running a for loop, but the for loop does not calls like DFS 1, 2, 3, 4. No. In total, it will call this four, like once this, which will make sure the DFS is four times, the DFS is two times, the DFS is three times. In total, it will be called three times. And that three times will make sure it visits them nine times. It won't be like every time it's getting called. So it's not something like in two. Overall, it will visit all the nodes and it will be 2e time that it will take to visit all the nodes. And there is this loop that is running for loop, this for loop, which is going to take n times. That's why this is the overall time complexity. This is the overall space complex. So guys, uh, I hope I was able to explain you this particular algorithm just in case I was. Please make sure you like this video. And if you are new to our channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button right away. And if you haven't checked out our dynamic programming playlist and the SD sheet, you're missing out on a lot. The links are in the description. Check them out. And here with this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.